So finally, um, I want to invite someone up. We all know her. We all love her. She greets us on the way inside this place. God has been doing an incredible work in her life. Um, we're talking about being reconciled, right? Being reconciled to God, being reconciled to ourselves. And God has been doing some remarkable stuff in the life of our sister over this quarter, being reconciled <laughs> to ourselves. So I'm going to call our sister Tish on up to come and share. Um, she earlier she made a comment. She was like, "Oh, I need. I, I'm working on my message." And, oh, I oh, wait. I mean, just my testimony. I'm like, "No, it's a message, girl. It's a message." So we're gonna ask Tish to share. And th okay, um, um, I wrote it down this time, so I wouldn't forget. Um, sit down. Sit down. I want to share. Um, this quarter is for um, being reconciled to ourselves, and um, there was three certain messages that really touched me or um, spoke to my um, heart. And one of them was the um, message that Phil um, spoke on. And it was about um, knowing who we are and what our purpose is in life. And I learned that we have to, um, if we want to go deeper um, in God, that we have, to, um, if we want more, we have to go deeper in Him. And um, we need to know what, when, and why we're here. And we need to find out why. And um, I found out the reason why I didn't know was because I simply didn't ask God why I'm here. Mm. Mm. Once I did that, it was a shift in my spirit. Mm. The enemy um, was keeping me stagnant in my spirit um, because I was un unable to speak and even talk and ask God, you know, with my mouth, just open up your mouth and just ask, you mm. know. Um, once I did that, um, God began to speak to me like never before. Um, the enemy um, knew I was a threat now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he, um, you know, he knows that once you're a threat, then, you know, you're going to start doing what God has called you to do. So he's going to try to do everything to stop you. And so once that started, a whole bunch of stuff that I've never dealt with started coming and started coming. But this time, instead of me freaking out, I just was like, okay. And, you know, and I went to God in prayer and I just gave it to him. I was like, you know, I don't need to worry about this no more. I was like, you know, because I've grown spiritually just in that moment mm -hmm. with me just asking him why. Mm -hmm. um, so I thank, you know, him for bringing that to me to just open my mouth and ask. Mm -hmm. um, the next um, lesson was with Gabe and Bree. Um, they, um, I learned that um, it let me note and understand that we don't have to believe the lies that we have been told all our lives. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that God knows that these things are small and he wants us to see that they're small and that he can help us get, you know, and have the victory. Yeah. Um, some of the things in, that I was believing within myself was that I'm not worthy. Mm. Um, I would always pray for other people and believe God and fast and pray and just be like, God, you know, do this, do that. And it would come forth and I'd just be like super excited about it. But when it came to me, I didn't do that. Mm. Um, but through this quarter, I learned I am worthy and I deserve the same things that everybody else does. Yeah. And so now yeah. I pray and I ask and I believe God yeah. for those things for myself. Mm. Um, and the last one was Reese's message when she was talking about God um, being, um, he has a role for us to play in this uh, movie called Life. And she had told us that um, he's the director, the writer, the producer, he's everything. And so we need to give um, ourselves to him and everything to him so that way he can um, direct us. Because, you know, he knows the beginning, the end, because he wrote it all. Yeah. You know, so um, we'll find strength in that when we, um, uh, trust him in that and um, and um, until you accept the role that he asked you I mean that he called you to do you won't be in your great fulfillment um, because sometimes he tries to give us a role like Reese was saying and we're like no I'm cool you know I'd rather do this you know no I'd rather play you know this role and then instead he's like no this is who I called you to be this yeah. is you know, the movie's going to get the best sales by you doing this part that I asked you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so once we do that, then we'll be um, better in life. And that, um, I, I've asked the Lord um, to um, help me change my identity. When uh, Stacy was dancing with that song, Change My Identity, Change Who I Am, Change the Way I Move, the Way I Speak, because I want to be more like you. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know who I was. You know, we, we learned who we are in God. Um, not just being like, you know, who I am, I'm Letitia, I was born, you know, whatever, but just knowing your roots and yeah. with all the stuff that we're learning today with our ethnicity and everything. Um, and we try um, a lot of times being someone else, mm -hmm. 
Um, and that doesn't get us anywhere because like Reese was saying, sometimes you're trying to be like this person and nobody even likes that person. <laughs> so, you know, that's just pointless, you know, so you're still not being liked even when you're not being yourself. And that um, I ask God to um, reconcile me to myself. Mm. Um, that's good. And um, just let me be who I am. Just be proud of who I am. Be, you know, accepting to who that is. And, um, yeah. And then that's, that's basically it. So I just, so, I'm man. just glad that, you know, that this stuff was brought to our church. I mean, because a lot of churches don't learn this stuff. We don't get deep in this stuff. We just, the basic stuff, you know, and this stuff is helping us within ourselves mm -hmm. to be um, better and to be who God called yeah. us to be. And I know that I'm on that path now. Amen. It's awesome. Amen.
how's everybody doing tonight this evening that's dull that's dull i need some i need some feedback i need some feedback good good that's awesome um i don't know where to start right now i just uh had a moment um that was really difficult for me because i just lost my grandfather about a month ago and we were uh talking about father's day and so uh just a transparent moment um, I'm just thankful for my family that's here to just stand by me, literally hold my hand and be with me in moments like that. Um, so yeah, let's just let God move tonight and we're excited to talk about uh, our ethnic identity and reconciliation to ourselves through God. All right, so we're just going to recap from last week. So last week, Pastor Phil um, <coughs> brought us to a place where uh, he touched on ethnicity and race. So uh, is it on the board? Is that what you want? Yes. Was the other one with the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is Yes. Perfect. All right. So <laughs> ethnicity refers to shared cultural practices, perspectives, distinctions. So we have our values, attitudes, customs, and beliefs for our ethnicity. And race, um, race is a, social cre a socially created construct that really uses our biological distinctions to create a hierarchy. So because I'm brown hair with dark eyes, I'm better than a person who has blue hair and blonde eyes. Um, I'm sorry, blonde, blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> definitely better. Definitely, definitely better, because I've never seen one of those before. <laughs> right, and uh, we also learned in that moment that our ethnicity is from God. Uh, so race is something that is created by our society, but our ethnicity is from God. So it is a gift from God. And we use, we took from Acts chapter 24, and Acts 24 says, from one man, he has created the nations, that we should inhabit the whole world, and he marked out the appointed times and boundaries of their lands. So again, just a reminder, as we're embarking on this journey, because it is a journey, it's not a one-time thing, our ethnicity is from God. Yeah. Um, and what we are doing here at On Ramps, it is our Quinania gathering. So today we're just going to spend some time in reflection. We're going to spend some time just using the stations to um, look at our individuality and how God uses our ethnicity through our individuality. Um, the last point is going to touch on um, a reconciled community is one that fully affirms who we are as an individual. So just be keeping that in your mind as we go through tonight. A reconciled community is one that fully affirms who we are as our individual selves. Mm -hmm. And so Kim's going to come up and share her journey um, through uh, her reconciliation to herself. And then I'll come up and share and then we'll break off into our stations. Okay. Do I have to speak in this? Right. Yes. <laughs> awkward. Okay. Um, so I watched, I wasn't here last week, but I was able to watch the video and um, a lot of what Phil was sharing really resonated with where I have been on my journey as it relates to, um, I'm sorry, can you guys hear me? Is this okay or should I stay there? Should I stay there? Okay, um, I'm sorry, this is really kind of messing up my groove. Um, I'm sorry. just being honest, I feel a little confined to the, this whole thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so as Kendra and I were meeting, as Kendra and I were meeting over this a couple weeks ago, we were talking about this journey that we have as it relates to our ethnic identity, and um, Psalm 139 obviously came up for us uh, prior to meeting with Phil, and one of the things that I was kind of like an aha moment as we were processing this is I never considered my ethnic identity a part of that one Psalm 39 equation for me. So the fact that I was fearfully and wonderfully made, the fact that God was so intentional in designing so many things about me, I'd never considered that that included who I was as a European American and all of the, whatever that means. Mm. So um, one thing I want to encourage you guys tonight, because what we really feel is that through the stations, the Holy Spirit is really going to be ministering to you. Um, and so we want to give a lot of space for that. Um, but that each person is probably in their own part of their journey so for me I didn't really start this journey till about two years ago mm -hmm. and that wasn't until I was dropped into a place that was ethnically diverse than the one I had been in before so I was probably a very mono white suburban ethnic like thing that I kind of just stayed in um, with the exception of my handsome husband <laughs> 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 so, 
So, um, so I wasn't really aware that this was part of the equation. Yeah, right back there. <laughs> So I wasn't aware that this was part of the equation until about two years ago when I was kind of um, just everywhere there was diversity, right? Um, and so that is when my journey started. And some folks can say my journey started here. Some folks can say I don't even know what this journey looks like. Um, some people can say it's always been. So as long as I can remember, I've been on this I, um, journey. And God has, and through that, it's either been probably celebrated, so who you are and your ethnic identity has been probably celebrated, or maybe it's been oppressed, or maybe like myself, I was like unaware of it. Um, and so as God has been reconciling back to myself um, and to who he is, this has now been a part of the equation. And I want to speak truth to that that is, I'm getting a fuller picture of not only who I am, but a fuller picture of who the body of Christ is mm -hmm. and who God is yeah. as Father yeah. God and Creator. Yeah. So, um, and that journey for me has been sometimes difficult because just from my perspective, I felt like I just wasn't celebrated. Like we didn't talk about my ethnic identity, didn't talk about my heritage, didn't talk about these things. And it really wasn't important to me. Um, and so it was kind of abstract. Mm. Um, others, um, you might find tonight that it was something that was celebrated. It's something you, there's a lot of tradition around. There's a lot of happy moments around. Others, there might be not so so happy, and that's for different reasons. So as you begin to let God unfold this journey for you, um, kind of allow space to process those feelings and those thoughts, um, because it's that space in which we learn more about who we are, who God has created us to be, and who really he is as creator, right? Because he created mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Um, and he then said it was good. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to just kind of share that, that part of my journey, that it's still unfolding, that there, I don't think that I will ever arrive. And I really, um, find that there's a lot more worth celebrating than I ever could have thought. Mm. Not only about my own ethnic identity, but about those that are around me. Um, mm -hmm. And I really begin to understand myself as I'm in, in a diverse place with others as well. Um, so that is what tonight is about. So, so the stations that have been set up are about just creating space for you to look at scripture, to look at who God has created you to be, and to just, I don't know, maybe be quiet in that space, let him speak to you, maybe have a dialogue with him about, okay, like maybe this is new. I mean, I remember the first time I just was like so overwhelmed. I was like, what in the world is going on? Like all of these thoughts and am I losing, you know, just what was going on? Um, and so that is okay, right? So, um, and as time has gone on, I feel like God has started to put that together. Um, um, for me and he's kind of shown me that this is what this means or maybe let's go here and kind of just like discover what this is um, so yeah I just want tonight just to encourage you to give space for that as you either start your journey or you go deeper um, in that journey with with who God is I want that to be like remembering that, that that's a gift like all that you are like one psalm 139 like that includes like all of who you are yeah. and that is a gift yeah. yeah it's a gift to yourself it's a gift to our body it's a gift to god and when we want to suppress that for whatever reason we're like suppressing a good 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 thing and we're suppressing um, really something that God like in, like if you read 139 and there's some scripture back there we're on the stations it's like he was so intentional about creating all of who you are and that says something right it's not something he just like was like oh let's just kind of put this together and there's Kendra you know but no it's like that is all of who she is and that is all of who I am. And it is good. Yeah. We are his workmanship. We are complex. There's a translation that says we are complex. I'm like there's parts of me that I don't even know, right? And that's part of the journey. Yeah. So Kendra's gonna come up and share a little bit of hers and then we'll we'll delve into the stations a little bit more. So yeah. cool. So I just wanna share something before I'm gonna do a little different. I'm probably just gonna tell 
a little bit of um, my story of my journey through my ethnic identity, but I just want to start with this. Um, it says, our salvation in Christ is meant to be bring forth restoration. This restoration is not partial or compartmentalized, but instead it is meant for the whole person, which includes your ethnic identity. Salvation is meant to restore everything about the person. So in restoring you through your salvation, your ethnic identity is a part of that. Um, so I can, from the earliest ages, from the earliest ages I can remember, is there something wrong with this mic? I feel like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, is there something wrong? I feel like I'm echoing back. Um, from the earliest age I can remember uh, that I feel like I started on my ethnic journey um, was, I was probably about, uh, I'll say five or six. And uh, my grandfather had a huge backyard. And in the, this backyard, he grew uh, collard greens and tomatoes, and he had a plum tree and a peach tree and a lemon tree. And I just remember being young and always watching him and his connection to the earth. So he would be in the backyard and his hands would be in the dirt. And there was something, um, there was something beautiful I feel like was taking place when he was connecting with the earth. I didn't understand why he connected with the earth like that. I didn't understand what that meant to me, but I just remember from an early age being inclined to just have that connection with nature and the earth. So I feel like that was probably my earliest thought process about, huh, why is my grandfather so connected to the earth and how does that speak to my ethnic identity? Like I, I, didn't, I didn't have the words or the, the thoughts to make the connection of that. Um, so I grew up in a household where um, I feel like the fact that I'm an African-American woman, um, that was fully celebrated. Um, I can recall my grandma saying, you are not a color, you are not black, you are not brown, you are African-American, you come from an African descent. Um, and I was just like, huh, I wonder where these terms black and white came from. I didn't, I was just like, well, well, grandma, no, the, if I fill out a paper at school, it says I'm black or I'm white or I'm other or I'm Mexican, which is, that's interesting, but whatever. <laughs> I'm black and white, I'm Mexican or I'm other. So, I mean, just wrestling through that right there in my journey was like, huh, okay, that, that's, another, that's another point that like hit me and I was like, okay, what, is, what does all this mean? Um, so I continued to, you know, go throughout life and an, another thing that was really huge for me was understanding um, my physical distinctions, like my hair. Um, from like probably six or seven, as a young African-American girl, I was sent to the shop to get my hair straightened. So the, the, the state that my hair is in right now is my original state. Like it's, it's Afro, it's kinky, it's curly, it's big, okay? Bomb. If I let it out, it'll be, yeah, it's bomb. bomb. It's bomb, it's beautiful, I love it. I love it, but I, I can recall um, them sending me to the shop because there was something wrong with my hair. Like, your hair is nappy, Kendra. You need to go to the shop. You have to get it blow dried. You have to sit under the dryer for 45 minutes. You have to make it straight. So you have to take it away from its original state, the uniqueness that God created me with. And you have to make it into something else, into what our society has defined as beautiful. And I, I, I remember doing that. And I, for years, I would go to the shop. And I, I have a very sensitive scalp. So they would put the perm on my hair and I would be like on fire. Like five minutes in, I'm like, oh Lord. My, I was like, you just being sensitive, sit there. And I remember getting my hair burnt and I was just like, gosh, and they were just like, they would leave scabs in my hair. And I'm sure other women in here who are African-American, have you guys had that experience? So you guys know what I'm, you know where I'm coming from then, right? So I, I, it hurts, it, it's not comfortable, but I remember like, they were taken away from something that was a part of my ethnic identity to make it something else because it wasn't good. But like Kim said, like, it is good. It, it was created purposely for a reason. Um, and I remember being about four, 13, 13, 14, and my aunt had a lady working in the shop with her, and she was, she was a specialist when it came to natural hair. And I remember walking in the shop one day, and I told my aunt, I was like, I'm not getting any more perms. Like, I want to be like LaFrida and see her. I want my hair to be like that. And I remember at that age of 14, like, walking away from those chemicals and those things and, like, never looking back to that. And I just was like... Yeah, I, and again, I didn't have the words for it. I didn't have the language for it, but I knew that there was something within me that just wasn't comfortable with that process. So, I mean, just, you know, I'll just give you a couple of minutes. Like, just think about those things in your life that have told you from a very young age that who you are and the way you're created is not good. Like, I just, I'll give you like a minute to just think about that.
Um, I hope that was enough time just to, you know, kind of sit with that and think about it. Um, another thing I just want to put out there, read to you, a part of our journey to understanding our ethnic identity is being able to celebrate and grieve our ethnic heritage. So yes, there's very much things to celebrate, but for a lot of us, there's things to grieve. There, uh, Su Chan Ra talked about this when he came out here. He talked about um, actual physical deaths taking place in our lives and spiritual and literal deaths taking place in our lives and how um, through ripping away our ethnic identity by the dominant narrative, we have really experienced deaths in our lives. Like those things that God has uniquely and innately created us to be, our society has said those things are not good. Um, and I just, I, I, I understand that you have to hold the two. Like, yes, we are embracing this and saying it's a celebration, but we also want to give space for you guys to be able to grieve those things that you have lost and that have kind of been taken away from the very way that God said you were created to be. Um, I had a friend and she was telling me, she was like, I don't, where are you going to go with this racial, I mean, this, um, this reconciliation to yourself? Where are you going to go with this conversation? Because I don't identify with being African. I identify with being black. I don't have any roots. I don't have any heritage. Um, I don't have any connections to the soil of Africa. For all I've known throughout my entire life, I've been American. And um, I didn't really have the answer for her in that moment. I told her, you know, I don't, I don't know. So I went and talked with one of my friends and um, there's this term called Africanism. And what that means is that there are specific things that um, survive the, um, excuse me, let me make sure I'm quoting this right, Sur survive the Atlantic slave trade. So as um, the slaves from Africa were brought to the US, there's like cultural things that survived. And this might, might sound familiar to you, might not. Um, like ritual circles, so circles being created, like that didn't just come from anywhere. Those are things that are prominent in the African American church because those are things that came from African heritage. Um, call and response is another thing. Um, you say something, I say something back. Um, drums, like using drums as that, as that being the center of our, um, our African American music. Like these are all things that survived from Africa. And so when people were saying like, I, don't, I can't identify with that, I don't know what that is. It's like, no, there are things and, I, and I'm glad that I could be able to stand here and say there are things that I can still celebrate my culture. Yes, I don't have my language and yes, there are a lot of things that are missing but there are a lot of things that have survived that. And so just to be able to embrace that is a gift. Um, I think that's all I really have to share right now. Um, uh, we're gonna give some time for you guys to break off into the stations. Uh, what we wanted to have you guys do was to start off with the mirror station. There are um, instructions on the wall, just follow the instructions. Um, you'll move from the mirror station to the, um, the station where you see the flag of the United States. Um, and then from there, there is one last reflective question where it says rest in his presence. Um, and that will pretty much uh, ask questions about how you felt at these two stations. So if you guys could just spend some time um, going through the stations and processing, that would be great. Um, and then we want to break up into small groups of two or three and really just process through, um, through your ethnic identity to yourself and to what these stations challenge within you. So yeah, we'll just give some time for that now. Do you have anything else, Kim? I just wanted to say, yeah. um, Go ahead. as it relates to, because I had, when we were talking about this map station, it's going to ask you to kind of identify your heritage. Yeah. And um, one of the things I was stuck with, I was, I was like, I don't know where that is, right? Like, I don't know, like I'm white person living in Fresno. <laughs> like, I don't know if I should put that or if I should think all the way back to where. So one of the things that uh, Kendra and I talked about was this whole idea of like taking it back to this race versus ethnicity thing. And it's not like a black and white issue. So just kind of um, allow wh however, wherever you feel like, you know, you wanna start this journey at, um, or maybe you've already started it, you know, um, for, for me, like I don't have any relatives and like Kendra does, but in other continents, but I'm learning that a part of, a big part of who I am is from, from Germany. You know, I don't know what that means or what that looks like, you know, but I might put one there there, and then one here because a lot of my family is from here and there's a lot of roots here and a lot of my beliefs and values are from here too. So, you know, I think that's part of, of the journey um, and just keeping in mind 
the race versus ethnicity thing. I think sometimes our, that's something that our society has created this whole idea of race and it boxes it in for us. Mm -hmm. And God creates create our ethnicity that involves so much more. Um, and so just kind of, I guess, wrestle with that. And, and uh, there's also some stations for communion. Um, you guys want to do that as well. Um, and that is just kind of lead yourself through that. And then for Father's Day, we have some Father's Day cards. You can either take one and, or two or three and do that at home, or you could do it, do it now, um, however you guys feel led to do that as well. There's also whole life giving. Um, you could participate in that. So as you move through those stations, just kind of go as you feel led, and then we're going to regroup maybe in about 15 minutes um, and kind of process a little bit um, what that was like. So. Does anyone want to share? Does anybody like want to share? share in the larger group setting? I know a couple of us said, I know Lisa said, in, um, it, how hard it was to look in the mirror. Because mm -hmm. the first thing you do is pick out the flaws that you mm -hmm. have. And it's hard to just look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Even though you've just read the scripture, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> uh, I am, but <laughs> yep. no, you're right. Yeah, it's very hard. Yeah. Fish. I would just say, um, for myself, the challenge came in um, with the map. I just got overwhelmed. So I'm like, I have no idea where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Like, not, you know, just not with my mom. You know, she didn't know, and then my grandmother didn't. Grandpa, I never met them, so I'm just like, I don't even know where to start. So like, I would just say, like you said, where I was going, ring on the back, that's all I know. You know what I mean? And it just got like kind of frustrating, so I just didn't mm -hmm. want to do it. But you know, that's something important. You need to know where you're from. Mm -hmm. You know, know your ethnicity. It's important. <coughs> Anybody else? Oh, sure. Just the um, the communion station and the significance of communion. Um, that Jesus knew the trials he would be facing and that as a part of his obedience he openly embraced the sacrifice and the pain and the cost of our walk and that not only did he embrace that cost but he left us a reminder so we would know when things get hard and when he asks us to face the hard things mm -hmm. he endured as well he's not asking us to do something that he didn't do and that the reward is greater in the end so mm -hmm. that's good I think for me, um, honestly, I didn't go to all the stations. I've just been sitting here processing the fact that I come from a lot of different places. And if I were to say, like, well, I'm just going to pick one, I feel like other stuff is left out. And I think a lot of times I just want to simplify things and say, I just want this one. And God is teaching me, it's okay to use and. It's okay to say that you're this and this and this and this. And it, it's okay to be complex. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. And you could rejoice in all of those even if rejoice in the fact that I'm Native American and English and we went to battle, like, that's okay. If that's part of my heritage, I could come to terms with that and that's okay. And so learning how to just embrace the diversity <laughs> even within myself <clears throat> and knowing that that's okay. Embrace the band. Yes, good. Yeah, not that war. Anybody else? Um, kind of just looking in the mirror, um, one of the things that popped in my head was um, in the book of James, where it talks about um, be doers of the word, not just hearers. For you know, when you look in the mirror, it's like a man looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. um, I just, it, I just thought about you know <laughs> the things that we take into consideration. So some of us, you know, I, I just know for me personally, and, and and maybe a lot of other people in the past, I've spent more time in my preparation for the day in the morning looking more in the mirror to see what I look like than in the word to see what I really look like and um, just kind of teach me what to esteem and what not to esteem that's good wow. yeah. you better preach right that's, um, that's really good <laughs> so I want to encourage you we want to encourage you to keep going on this journey Oh, I'm sorry. Go. 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 I was just going to say that I grew up um, thinking that I was Italian and Irish and English and German and whatever. And um, 
I was thinking that I grew up, my grandfather came over from Italy, and so all his friends and, and my uncle, or my mom's uncles, they were all speaking Italian around the table. So I grew up with this kind of this, this heritage of thinking I was Italian and like kind of owning that. And then people would say, you look Indian. And I'm like, huh, well, there was a mail order bride way back, you know, the, the family, and we heard about this. And so I thought, well, maybe there was somebody that was Indian or something. So I did this thing called 23andMe. It's a DNA test. <clears throat> I'm not Indian. <laughs> and what I found is I'm only 4% Italian. So my grandfather must have come. So I feel like people um, moved, <laughs> have moved around so, 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 so much that we, we don't. So you can say, well, I'm African-American. But... You could have Egyptian, you could have Indian, you could have, there's so many things and it's a really cool thing to do. It's $99, I found out that I'm 17% Jewish. Wow. I'm like 38% like Northern, but the European part where it's from is, I'm probably like Romanian or something, mm -hmm. so which is why I look different than I would have been like just um, mm -hmm. kind of darker. And, and anyway, so <coughs> Irish, English, all that. So it's kind of a neat thing. But then the other thing I thought about was I thought about just our culture, um, how our culture dictates so much, and how I love what Kendra said at 15, is that what she was that You said you were done. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, I love that, because I love to buck what our culture says mm -hmm. we are supposed mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. And you need to do this or you need to do that. As a woman, as a woman mm -hmm. growing older, yeah. mm -hmm. it's very difficult. Yeah. And I was thinking, I dye my hair, yeah. and I get scabs on my head from dyeing my hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I hate it, and I'm like, I just wanna go gray. I know it's different because it's, it, but it does yeah. get into the essence of mm -hmm. who yeah. you are, yeah. whether you're Caucasian or African American or Indian, but whatever it just it's telling our society says you're not enough yeah. and mm -hmm. that's the lie of the enemy yeah, yeah. That's, that's the things that we have to remember no matter what color we are whatever our background is whatever our ethnicity is is that it is the lie that we are fearfully and wonderfully mm -hmm. just as we are as we grow older whatever yeah. we are yeah. and i think that's i just want to fight it yeah. so much yeah. all the time yeah don't always Greatest wisdom. <laughs> 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 that's what the Bible said. No, that's what the Bible said. <laughs> 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 A lot of wisdom in that chair. So yeah, just continue on this journey because it's a part of your journey of being reconciled back to yourself. It's a part of your journey of being reconciled back to who God is. And um, we were talking the other day, like when we fully become who we are, like when we're on this journey, like as Kendra discovers that, yeah. then it's a gift to me, right? And she's alive and who she is is a gift. And we're trying to suppress that. We're suppressing the goodness of who God is. Yes. And, um, That's good. And so That's good. we've been talking about like God's intentional design as it relates to creation. Mm -hmm. And God created like a polyculture system That's right. in which nature would thrive and grow. That's right. And so when that happens, disease does That's not right. take place. Mm -hmm. um, life happens and all of this stuff. And it's like when we do the monoculture and mm -hmm. agriculture, mm -hmm. that's a whole other topic. But <laughs> there's disease thrives right. yeah. and wow. things die and it's right. the soil depleted. Yeah. And so as we begin this right. continue this journey of reconciliation and this is a part of it, we will thrive as the body of Christ. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's encourage you because it's good it's hard right yeah, yeah. I mean think about nature like things are dying yeah they think, right. but life comes out of that yeah. um, and soil is richer and so yeah. God I just take the light in you tonight um, as creator yeah um, and not that you just do something together God but everything you design is so intentional wow. Yeah. Wow. it's so intelligent yeah. God it's backed by your wisdom it's mm -hmm. backed by your grace yeah. it's backed by your justice your righteousness your holiness yeah. God yeah. all of who you are um, just shines through in your creation. God, and I pray um, that as each one of us continues on this journey of being reconciled, um, that we would feel your presence. God, that we would have new eyes to see you. God, we would have new eyes to see ourselves. And we would have the courage to embrace it, God. 
Um, I'm thankful that your grace is enough and it covers us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when we don't know, we don't have the answers, God. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we thank you and we, uh, we celebrate you tonight. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.